well come online wherever you are for our service. This Tuesday evening service most well come in the name of Jesus. Invite your friends, invite your family. This is a good time to listen to the word of God together with your family and friends wherever you are. Share this and call more in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. Please join us in worship as we prepare to hear the word of God this evening. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praises, Lord. You established the heavens and you laid the foundations of the earth. We want to give you thanks and praises today in the name of Jesus. Lord, be lifted and be glorified in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are able to do all things and we praise you and honor you and worship you, God. Be exalted, now then be exalted in the heavens for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Welcome again in Jesus' name to hear the word of God. And today I would like to speak on why you must fast. The subject of tonight is why you must fast. In the text of 1 Kings chapter 21. And that is where we'll get through this word for this evening. So welcome with your Bible and your notebook. 1 Kings 21. We'll see the story of three main characters there. One is Ahab, and then his wife Jezebel, and then we have Naboth. And these are the main players in this text of 1 Kings 21. And my key point here is why you must fast. One day the disciples of Jesus came to him and told him the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast. And they inquired from Jesus why they don't fast. But Jesus told them, you can't fast when I'm here, but the time, days will come when we'll fast. And these are the days of fasting. And therefore I want us to see something very important from the story we shall read here about why you must fast as a believer. As a matter of fact, in the Beatitudes when Jesus was teaching, he said three things, when you give, when you pray, when you fast. He didn't say if, he said when you fast. And therefore, fasting as a Christian, as a spiritual Christian, is not a suggestion, it's not a proposal. It's not just a good idea, it's a requirement. And that's why I've said why you must fast. Now let's go to the story of First Kings chapter 21 this evening. In verse 2 the Bible says, And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. And I'll give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seem good to thee, I'll give thee the worth of it in money. Now one of the things that you realize about life, the scripture has told us here, Naboth had an inheritance from his fathers. An inheritance is something, is a heritage you get from your father. And in our context as Christians, we have a heritage from God. I was thinking about this country, how many people have portrayed the heritage they've had from God, but within our time, they have lost the heritage. If you look in ministry, the ministry of preaching, the ministry of pastors, the ministry of singers, we've seen wonderful men and women, and we could acknowledge great deposit of inheritance from their father in heaven. But then it's good to understand that certain set system, systems to destroy the heritage of God in your life. And that is why we see people rise in a great way. You see somebody rising on stage and you can tell this is an, an, an international singer. And you see this person's stage is international. But within all time, you don't see that person again. The gift is gone, the talent is gone, and the heritage is stolen and destroyed. And therefore, in this country, we have so many mighty men and women who have risen to touch the world, but they are littered all over. They have fallen. The heritage has been stolen by the enemy. But 
that when you realize one of these secrets I'm about to speak today, you are able to save God, you are able to protect, you are able to fight for your heritage in God. Now this man called Naboth, the scripture says, Ahab came to him and made up again. He told him, because initially the enemy comes with a diplomatic approach. He comes through diplomacy. So he, he brought up again to Naboth, he told him, I need us to do a deal here. I want the land, the vineyard that is yours. And the scripture says, because it is near my house. Because it is near my house. And one of the things I was learning here is that you need to set your boundaries clearly apart. You need to set your boundaries clearly apart from the enemy because you find this vineyard of Naboth, uh, Ahab says, is just next to my house. You need to set clear boundaries because sometimes we allow the proximity, the, our distance and the enemy to be so close. We allow the enemy to come to our business, to come to our house, to come to our lives, to our children. There are no clear boundaries, but it's very important to keep clear distances apart and the enemy should not come to a certain distance near you. And therefore Naboth said, because it's near, we have two things we can do. One, I can give you money and then you give me the vineyard and then number two, if that's not favorable to you, we can always exchange. We quantify some value of assets I have and then I give you and then you give the land. It means this land was so precious to Ahab. But remember, it was a heritage of Naboth. It was an inheritance from the father. And today you have an inheritance. The young people who are coming up, men and women, there is a heritage of God in you. You can be, maybe the heritage is to be an international worship leader, is an international prophet, is an international pastor or minister or apostle. It's a heritage. There is a heritage you have for God. But you need to understand there is a battle between you, the enemy, and the enemy because of that heritage. And the moment you find a lot of interest of the enemy in your life is because he can perceive the kind of heritage deposited in your life. And therefore the enemy looked and discerned and perceived the kind of heritage that Naboth had and he came up with a scheme, a system, a system. And the emphasis here is a system. It is good to know that demons and some things you're fighting are systems. You can see like you're fighting an individual, like you're fighting a situation, like you're fighting a person. You see Jezebel. So Jezebel came and told Naboth. So Naboth refused the negotiation of Ahab. He refused the deal and he told Ahab, no, I can't agree to that. He refused completely. And when Ahab went at home, he was very, very, very distressed. And when Jezebel came, his wife looked at her husband. She realized this man is under distress. And she did an inquiry and asked Ahab, her husband, what's wrong? And then Ahab said, today I had a time with Naboth and I did a negotiation because I'm interested with this vineyard. And then Jezebel asked, then what happened? And Ahab narrated and said the deal didn't work. He refused. Then the man, the woman came, Jezebel came and said, now I'll give you a strategy. If you want the vineyard, you'll have it. And therefore the scripture says, this woman called Jezebel devised a strategy, a scheme on how to get the vineyard from the hands of Naboth, on how to get the inheritance of Naboth, on how to get the heritage of Naboth. You have a heritage. Your children have a, a heritage of deposit, deposited in their lives for God. Great men and great giants. But you must understand that the heritage is under contest. It has to be contested. You have to fight for it. You have to safeguard it. And if you're not conscious of this, you realize after you leave this world and you get to heaven, how much God had assigned you to accomplish, but you didn't accomplish. Because your heritage was stolen by the enemy. And therefore Jezebel vowed and said, you'll have the vineyard as you had requested. And this is the scheme she came about with. In verse 9, 1 Kings 21 verse 9, she said, the Bible says, and she wrote in the letter saying, 
proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. Verse 10. And set two men, sons of Barrier, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thus didst thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. Jezebel now came here with a strategy. You need to understand that what Naboth now is engaging in, the kind of fight he is getting into is not a fight with a person. Because most of the times we don't understand, we think our battles are a certain circumstance, a certain person, a certain situation. I want you to understand that Jezebel was not a personality. Jezebel was also a sister. She was a sister. You need to understand that you have an inheritance from the father, but there is a demoniac system in place to make sure that the heritage in you, your inheritance from the father, the gifts, what God has deposited in your life doesn't see the light of the day. And the devil has succeeded in this. And therefore Jezebel came. Jezebel was a sister. Some things in your life you term as habits and occurrences. Individuals or things you look and say this is the cause, this is my problem. You need to see beyond them and understand that the enemy orchestrates systems that are there to make sure the heritage of God for your generation and in this life does not come to see the light of the day. Now Jezebel showed up with a good system that is going to fight the heritage of Naboth. The Bible tells us one of the things she said she wrote is to proclaim a fast. My emphasis is why you must fast. My brother, my sister, if the devil can mobilize the whole nation for a fasting simply because of your heritage, because some people I'm speaking to have a national heritage from God. Somebody I'm speaking to here as a singer, as a preacher, as an artist, as a teacher, as a professional, even as a politician, has a national heritage from God. And therefore, if you have a heritage of that kind of a magnitude, you need to understand your battles are of the same equivalent. They are of the same magnitude. And when there is a great deposit of inheritance in your life from God as an apostle, as a prophet, as a national worship leader, as a national political leader, you need to understand that there are equivalent systems put in place. Your spiritual warfare, warfare is no longer with individuals. Is, uh, is Your spiritual warfare is no longer circumstance bound. It's no longer situation bound, but it is a system. And just Jezebel was such a system. And therefore, one of the things that she understood as a demoniac system and prosperity were the secrets that work in the spirit. Because you need to understand the people of darkness understand some spiritual principles that Christians don't understand. They know the power of sacrifice. They know the power of fasting. They know the power of ascending mountains, going deep. They understand those dynamics. But sometimes Christians don't understand. And one of these principles that apply in the spirit and effectively work for that matter is fasting. And Jezebel knew how to apply this tool called fasting because he knew that the battle she's engaging with is a spiritual battle. It's not a battle of estates, it's not a physical battle, but it is a spiritual battle. She understood and therefore she mobilized, she garnered the spiritual resources and one of the resources she got into was fasting. Can you imagine now that God has deposited in your life a national heritage, an international ministry, but then you're not fasting, but the enemy is mobilizing a national fasting, and you're not fasting. What will happen? 
And that is why you find that some young people who are talented musicians, singers, worship leaders, preachers, apostles, sometimes you find they are short-lived because they don't understand these dynamics. You see somebody has this heritage, but then he doesn't observe this kind of revelation. So he wants to perform, he wants to preach, he wants to be everywhere. But there is no time of fasting. Fasting is a must if somebody feels he has a heritage from God. If you understand your heritage from God, you need to understand that you need every time to cover that heritage with fasting. You need to engage that heritage with fasting. Now let's see another story about Apostle Paul in the book of Acts 23 verse 12. Acts 23 verse 12. Let, let's see the, the same story. 23 verse 12. The Bible says, And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they will neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And there were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. Now, why were these men conspiring? Because these are agencies of satanic systems. These are agencies of demons. Why had they gathered? And one of the things they said, we shall fast. And in the course of our fasting, we shall release a curse. What did they know about fasting? Remember, these are demonic agents. They knew that there is a power, some spiritual energy that will be released to a curse when men fast. They knew that when they will curse without fasting, and when they curse when they have fasted, they knew the spiritual intensity of a curse that is as a result of men fasting. And therefore this demoniac band agreed and they said we are going to fast and when we are fasting we are going to release a curse. This man must die. Now can you imagine that some people are garnered somewhere with a common agreement that the heritage of God in you must come to an end? Can you see some demoniac agencies who have agreed? They've come to a common agreement that your ministry must die. Can you see some demoniac agencies who've come together and said your career must come to an end, your business must be shut, your ministry and church must be shut. Can you see that? And while this is happening, you are there and not knowing at all the things about fasting. Why were these men fasting? In Because again it's Paul in Acts 23. We can see the preceding verse 11 which the Bible says, And the night following the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must you bear witness also at Rome. It is because God had released an assignment. God had released, just like the time of Naboth, God had released the heritage to Naboth. This case also, God had spoken something, released something for Paul, a great thing indeed. Every time there is an assignment for God, and I'm speaking to somebody who feels you have an inheritance from God, you have a heritage from God, you have a calling from God, you've been called to go and to the nations, to go to preach, to go to sing, to do. If you feel you have a mandate from God, one of the things you must embrace in life, you must learn to fast. You must learn to fast. And therefore, back to the story of 1 Kings 21, one of the strategies Jezebel understood, she said, one of the things will mobilize the whole nation to do is to fast. And then the scripture says, and in the course of time we shall realize, shall this work, shall this conspiracy work? It will work because Naboth may not have had these revelations. Naboth is true, he had the heritage, he had the inheritance, but he may not have had revelation. And that is why every man and the woman of God, every person with a heritage from God, one of the things you must understand, every great dream and vision rides on the wheels of revelation.
It rides on the wheels of revelation. You every time need to receive a word from God to speak to you what you need to do. So one of the strategies was to fast. And the Bible says, verse 9, and set Naboth on high among the people. The next strategy was to position Naboth strategically. And listen to this revelation, friends. The enemy can position you strategically. He can position you in a place that you become an easy target. He can position you in a place where he knows that your security has gone. And that is one of the reasons why the Bible says the reason we need to, uh, to dwell in the sacred place of the Most High. The scripture says in Psalm 91 verse 3, one of the reasons we need to abide there is so that we can be safe from the fuller snare. A fuller is one who traps the birds. When a bird is set on a trap, the trap is set and then unknowingly, innocently, the bird comes there and then all of a sudden, suddenly the bird is caught by the trap. The enemy push trap to people. He sets them. He positions them. He orchestrates circumstances that lead them to a pit. He orchestrates the moves that lead them to a trap. I want to pray in the name of Jesus. Any of those traps in your life, I remove them in Jesus' name. Any of those pits on your life by the enemy, I remove them in the name of Jesus. And therefore, he was to be positioned by the devil. And every kind of alignment from the world of darkness in your ministry, in your shop, in your family, in the name of Jesus, that kind of an alignment, I rebuke it and condemn it in the name of Jesus Christ. And then the other strategy, the Bible says, Jezebel set two men, sense of barrier. Barrier also means Satan. So he looked for two men, sons of Satan. They were to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then call him out and stone him that he may die. So Jezebel, the first strategy she knew was a spiritual strategy. The strategy of fasting and the strategy of alignment. She knew the power of fasting and she knew also the strategy of positioning people to become his targets. The third strategy was legal because she knew that she had to meet the legal requirement. The judicial, he, she had to satisfy the judicial process to execute Naboth. And as a requirement of the law was, there must be the crimes committed and then those crimes there must be witnesses and devil can raise false allegations against your life false accusations can be spiritual false allegations can be schemes of darkness and therefore in order to satisfy the judicial process she raised two witnesses the sons of Satan and definitely she raised two capital offenses and the first offense was blaspheme against God and blaspheme against the king so two capital sentences two capital offenses blaspheme and treason if you remember the story of Jesus these were the same same accusations that Jesus was tried for and therefore the devil is an accuser knew, Jezebel knew that this will fetch the threshold of the judicial process when these two men will stand against Naboth and witness against him against these two capital offenses there is no way Naboth will escape a capital sentence and the capital sentence is that he will be killed by stoning and that is what they did and he was taken to court and when he went there he was charged of the two offenses and then Naboth was killed and his heritage went with Ahab remember that this man had a heritage from God but he needed some revelations he needed a revelation of fasting for example why did Naboth need to fast which you require also. Number one, fasting empowers you. This kind of level of spiritual and spiritual warfare. You can't fight it when you're weak. 
And therefore one of the ways you strengthen your inner man is by fasting. Receive the grace of fasting in the name of Jesus. That is one of the things that enriches, empowers, fortifies your spirit, your inner man. Fasting. Anybody who does not embrace the secret of fasting is a weak Christian and vulnerable to the enemy in the name of Jesus. The next thing that fasting does, you see when Naboth was called, he was placed in a high place and next to him there were two satans, there were two sons of Satan, the false witnesses. But Naboth did not understand. So number two, something that fasting does, it sharpens your discernment. How could Naboth sit amid these two sons of Satan? But he didn't know that these are sons of Satan. When you fast and you learn to fast, fasting sharpens your discernment. You'll be able to discern circumstances. You'll be able to discern people. Because some of the people you are engaging are sons of Satan. Some of the people you are getting into deals with are sons of Satan. Some of the people you are contending with you think are individuals, but they have ordained, been ordained from hell to bring you down. And therefore, when you learn to fast, you sharpen your discernment. These kind of things, wherever you find people, you'll be able to discern them. Number three, fasting breaks the fuller snare. The fuller snare is a trap. A fuller is one who traps, for example, animals. When you are trapping an animal, one of the ways you do it, you dig a pit and then on top you cover it with light material. So that when the animal comes and steps there, it sinks into the pit. It's not possible to know there is a forest snare. But when you are fasting, one of the things fasting will do is to remove those traps. Because the enemy puts traps in the lives of people. He puts traps along your feet as you're walking. When you're fasting, one of the things that will happen, for us near will be broken in the name of Jesus. It's my prayer even this evening. Any snare the enemy might have put on your feet on your way, any trap, any shackle on your way in the name of Jesus, by faith I remove it in Jesus' name. So when you're fasting, you remove the time of fasting. is a time of removing the snares. It's a time of removing the traps in the name of Jesus. That's why people who fast will never fall into certain snare in the name of Jesus. Number four, something else that fasting does. Remember, this man called Naboth was positioned in a place where he became an easy target for the enemy. Number four, fasting secures you from the enemy's targets. Today when there was going on, on in Israel, one of the things that Israel has done is to devise a defense mechanism, a defense system. And they are what they call bomb shelters. Bomb shelters are fortifications which are built and when like now Hamas is throwing the rockets in Israel. When rockets are thrown, the citizens can run and enter into the bomb shelters to secure them. When you fast, fasting is like a bomb shelter. It is something that preserves you from being an easy target. You know, there are people who are easy targets of the enemy. When a disease comes, it kills them. When an accident, it, they get into accidents. When they come, they lose money. Their, their things are stolen. They become easy targets of the enemy. But when you learn to fast, there is a kind of fortification you put in your spiritual life which secures you from becoming an easy target. Maybe have you been losing things recently and thinking that these are no more catastrophes? Maybe you think these are just this is just fate. You think that these are just calamities which are coming on your way. Those things are spiritual. Try fasting. Fast against those things. When you're fasting, one of the things you'll do, you're going to secure yourself against becoming an easy target of the enemy. And therefore, I encourage you in the name of Jesus that you embrace fasting to preserve your inheritance, to preserve your heritage in God. Fast
fasting does it. It works. It's my desire that you'll start from now if you had been being fasting before just start small 12 hours from morning to evening you can abstain from breakfast and lunch and then you'll grow we grow in the things of God but you have to start from somewhere receive the grace in the name of Jesus for the glory of God thank you Lord for this word we give you praise we give you thank worship you, Jesus. we thank you for those who have heard it and those who will hear it later I want to speak an impartation and grace. I pray, Father, you raise an army of men and women of fasting Thank you, for Jesus. the glory of God. Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Receive all the worship. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you for being with us online. I would like to invite you to give your offerings, your tithes. The tail number is there and the account number is there. Share this sermon. They share this sermon with many people it will revolutionize and bless their lives until we meet again shalom good night and the lord bless you amen thank you pokia sifa bwana pokia sifa jina la to kuzwe wana pokea sifa pokea sifa wana pokea sifa jina la koli to kuzwe Bwana pokea sifa Pokea sifa Bwana pokea sifa